so is twitter free now right it's like free now free last free last thank god almighty twitter's free at last so it's pretty much like not changing right staying the same uh, i don't know man my algorithm's all fucked up like i'll see some wholesome shit like capybaras just existing and then i'll see like a, a person being executed by the cartel and then i'll see some chick streamer dressed as sonic but all promiscuous you know or i'll see wrestling fanboys talking shit to each other and then i'll just see some like bots following me right but isn't that what makes twitter special it's cracking me up how elon musk bought it though like just to prove a point the dude straight up put his money where his mouth is and just fucking did it that's a man right there say so you're gonna do it and actually fucking do it wowzers I, I'm just I really hope he brings Donald Trump back and I'm not saying I'm not on Trump's side but man I swear he was like the best heel ever you know how everyone just hated him and he just knew how to stir the pot and lately all you have is what Biden just falling asleep all the time or literally falling because he's just an old man like dude you really need to have start having younger like politicians dude or presidents dude Biden is like, I had to look it up. He's like 79 years old. Like, God, I've dealt with old people like that. And at that age, they can't lift up their own watermelons or pick their own avocados. This dude's running our country. There's got to be someone younger to do that shit. And I don't even mean younger ideas and those values with woke culture and shit. Just someone that doesn't fucking blow out their back every time they sneeze. Anyways, yeah, I don't mean to get like political... But I don't know. Can you imagine bringing Donald Trump back and him just trolling Biden on all his posts and they just talking shit to each other on there and Trump's like coffee fee over and over again, just fucking spamming that shit. And when Trump left Twitter, he made that parlor app or at least like, you know, really got behind it and shit. And I remember signing up for it because I was like, dude, I want to kind of like see what he has to say, you know, but it's just boring over there, too, you know. Uh, all the people on their right wing and they're hating on all the current politics and shit and, and they're just all like, agreeing so there's no conflict and it's just fucking boring and that's why Twitter is so great you know but now that Elon Musk is the boss uh, he what it, all these left wing people are threatening to leave Twitter and go to some other app like there's like irony there right am I the only one like seeing it the irony or am I just being a goofus Honestly, I think they should only ban people on Twitter if they're legit threatening to kill someone. And I mean, that shit always falls through the cracks. I see so many people threatening death on there. And then, you know, child porn, because that's just it's terrible everywhere you put it, you know. Otherwise, Twitter's just fair game, you know. I remember when I like got TikTok famous for a little while and I tried to share my video of me dancing to Ace of Base in front of my Nazi flag. Uh, it got me a strike on there. And I'm like, bro, with this comedy, come on. How's this a strike, but not some chick that whips out her nipples and breastfeeds their five-year-old gifted child? It's, it's two sides of the same coin, am I right? And I remember getting another strike for putting this like clip from a scene of a movie called Killer Joe, uh, starring Matthew McConaughey, right, where he's a hitman. And the scene has some woman talking shit to him and he just punches the fuck out of her and grabs a chicken leg from a bucket of KFC off the table and while she's on her knees he like goes up to her basically like ha has the fucking chicken leg over his crotch and just has her simulate giving him a blow job uh right in front of her husband to the KFC chicken leg <laughs> and Matthew Connor is all moaning and shit all sexual and the husband's just watching like a cuck. Because Matthew McConaughey is a scary motherfucker in that movie. There's even a part where he grabs a can of imitation pumpkin filling and hits a guy with it in the face a couple of times. I don't know. Killer Joe's fucking weird, but it's it's great. I guarantee it. Go watch it. Uh, but yeah, like going back to like social media and networks, Facebook I don't even really use anymore. That Mark Zuckerberg looks like a fucking alien that can't handle our atmosphere and shit that sick fuck he probably wants to save uh 
go global warming and shit because he can't handle the heat and instagram eh, it's okay i guess it, it's starting to get all pussy like the facebook you know it's turning from makana hey to makana gay huh am i right that's funny right all right all right all right you know Matthew McConaughey is actually from my hometown of Uvalde, Texas. It's true. Uh huh. Look it up. He says it pretty often. And that reminds me, I remember uh, my childhood home was right next to a museum, the John Nance Garner Museum. And if you didn't know, John Nance Garner was the 32nd vice president of the United States. I had to look that up too. Uh, he's from Uvalde too. Hey, pretty cool, right? You're learning something from this podcast. Anyways, I remember. When uh, Bill Clinton was president, and I was, I don't know, third grade, or I don't remember the the year, but I guess Hillary Clinton was doing her first lady tour and came to Uvalde to that John Nance Garden Museum to say a speech or something. I don't remember. Anyways, the museum is right next door to my childhood home. So all these reporters and cameramen were in our yard and on our roof to get, I guess, pictures of uh, Hillary Clinton. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why are they all on our property? You know, telling my mom and my mom didn't care. I guess she just liked the attention. Pretty sure, though, my mom actually got to meet. I think she met Hillary Clinton or I remember she gave her like a fruit basket and Hillary Clinton gave her back like a thank you letter that was signed for the fruit basket. I don't know. I That's I'm pretty sure that's true. Can you imagine my mom and Hillary Clinton like two of the most evil women in history. <laughs> I don't know. I miss Bill Clinton, though. The country was <clears throat> it was all cool back then. All he wanted to do was have some fun, and everyone made a big deal about it. And look at us now. We wish that was the biggest problem we had to deal with. The president getting some brain and making it rain. That's a true story, though, about the Hillary Clinton being next door to my house at the museum. Fact check me. It's true. You can ask anyone. And finally, thinking about like my childhood home, that reminds me, uh, I'm, again, I think third grade, third grade's always where I go to. There was a, the school I went to was really close to my childhood home, right? So I would walk home from school and along the way, there was like this mini cemetery, like, I don't know, for soldiers or dead soldiers or something. And it was like, you never saw anyone getting buried there, but I'm I'm sorry, I'm getting off on this side rant of how, like, uh, cemeteries are just a huge waste of space. <laughs> they, like, the land that could literally be used for anything better than to just have dead bodies and caskets rotting. And then, you know, monu- uh, stone monuments. They can be used for parks or schools or gyms or even put a fucking Burger King there and it'll be a better use of the land. Why do we need to have our fucking dead ancestors? Whatever, you know. Anyways... I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked, you know? So I would come walking home from school by that cemetery, and there was this random house that uh, me and my buddies from school would go up to, and it was an old Mexican lady's house, and she had all these Mexican candies and sweets and shit, and she would sell them to, like, the kids that came into her house. She would just have her door open uh, right after school, you know? And so I would always get this little, like, like dip that was like half Mexican chocolate and half Mexican vanilla that you just like, I think it had a little like red spoon or you would use your fingers to just directly go in there. And my buddies would always get those watermelon shaped candies or like the Lucas's that, ugh, fuck, the Lucas is disgusting. I can't stand it. I remember uh, seeing like a science experiment where they put like a actual egg inside of like a bunch of Lucas and it just like dissolved the whole egg or something. I don't know. I can't handle that shit. But yeah, I'm just thinking like of how scary the world is now. And like literally me as a kid, we would just be in the neighborhood after school and go up to some random Mexican lady's house and just buy imported candies, you know. Oh man, those were the good old days, you know. But yeah, uh, about Twitter, I don't know. I, I would just stick with it you know what's what's really going to change you know uh i would really buy some sco- stock in twitter because it sounds like it's going to go up from how cheap it is and yeah i would just you know try to stay safe like i always tell you i'm going to end on this joke let me see if you can get it okay i I made this up a while back uh 
Here's my impression of Duke Ellington after he stubs his toe. You ready? Yeah. If you're uh, an older black man, you would find that very hilarious. <laughs> if you're into jazz music, that that joke should have you in stitches. But yeah. Anyways, take care and uh, yeah, have have a wonderful uh, weekend. Bye.